welcome back. In this module, we're going to talk about credit cards. Uh, you're going to learn about the differences between a credit card and debit card. We're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of using credit cards. And more importantly, you're going to learn how to compute the average daily balance and how finance charges on credit cards are determined. And then we'll also go over how you can go about choosing the right credit card for you. Let's get started. Credit cards and debit cards may look the same, but they are very different. A debit card is linked directly to your checking account. And each transaction from a debit card is deducted immediately from your checking account. And you can only spend what you have in your account unless you have overdraft protection. For a credit card, it is actually a loan from the card issuing bank. Uh, so interest will begin if you don't pay off the entire balance by the end of the uh, statement date, which may or may not be the end of the month. Your spending is linked, linked to your credit limit that was approved. So that's the loan amount, not how much cash you actually have. So it is much easier to overspend with a credit card than with a debit card. So why would anyone want to use a credit card? Well, there are advantages to using credit cards. You don't have to carry cash around. Now, this part you can do with both a credit card and a debit card. Uh, another advantage is that you don't really have to pay interest as long as you pay in full each month. And your transaction history is recorded. And importantly, it helps you build credit. Credit card also enable you to protect against fraud, fraudulent charges, meaning that if you, your card was stolen or you get an identity theft incident, uh, you can uh, file for protection against your credit card charges. And also if you have a dispute with your merchants. So for example, a defective product or, uh, or an incorrect charge. Of course, there are a lot of disadvantages as well. Uh, the biggest one is that it allows spending beyond your means. So if you don't plan accordingly, if you do not have a budget or you don't have control over your spending, then credit card can be very dangerous. Uh, also, if you end up not being able to pay off your monthly balance, you can end up with uh, high interest charges. Uh, and that can accumulate because unpaid balance continue to accrue interest and you, your balance, meaning the amount that you owe, can actually continue to increase even if you don't buy anything more. Credit card has a lot of advantages uh, and you need to use it smartly. Uh, first of all, you can pay off your purchases right away. Uh, just because you have until the end of the billing per period to pay it off, doesn't mean you have to wait till then. Uh, you can actually make payment on your credit card uh, anytime. Uh, so all you need to do is just click pay after you make a purchase, particularly a major purchase. Uh, you can also make it a habit to pay more than once. So you can uh, make a habit to make your credit card payment as soon as you get paid. That way you avoid um, accumulating balances and spending money that you don't have. There are two main types of credit card. Uh, one, the first type is tied to a specific store. Uh, so those credit cards, you can only make purchases at the specific store. Uh, so uh, department stores are very famous for the credit card, for example, Lowe's card or Target's card or Kohl's card. Uh, and then the general credit card. Uh, these are cards that can be used at any store, any restaurants, uh, and they are issued by banks. Uh, and also they can be issued by businesses such as Amazon and also institutions. Uh, examples include Citibank card um, or Amazon card or even Venmo, uh, they have their own credit card. So there's uh, a lot of them and they are pretty common. When you are choosing a credit card, these are the characteristics that you want to look for. Uh, the first is annual fee. There are many cards that don't charge an annual fee. Uh, so those are usually a good choice for most consumers. Uh, another one is the interest rate. Uh, here you want to watch out for uh, what we call a teaser rate. Uh, a lot of times uh, they are also called introductory rate. Let's say the first six months you have an introductory rate of 0%. And then it goes up to 25% or 30%. Uh, 
And then the third is the credit limit. So this is how much the bank will allow the credit the uh, the card company will allow you to spend up to. Uh, for a consumer, is to remember that the credit limit is the amount of loan you are taking out. It's not money you have. Uh, cash advance is another option. Interest rate is usually very very high, so uh, this is not a good way to borrow money. Um, so again, with budgeting, you will be able to avoid taking out expensive loans. There are other features as well. Um, a lot of credit cards have rewards or incentives. So these are the cash back. You may get one percent or two percent cash back. Uh, if they come with annual fee, then you want to be careful about that. Um, and uh, also some cards uh, have special privileges. Uh, it depends on the individual situation. Uh, for most consumers, uh, those incentives usually are not worth the annual fee of 100 or $200. Uh, you can probably uh, get the things you need without paying the annual fee. A common confusion about consumer is the difference between the brand of credit card and the bank that is issuing the card. There are a few major brands. Um, those are the East, uh, so these are the uh, credit card brand companies. They include Visa, Mastercard, Discovery, American Express. Those are the most common ones. Uh, these cards are issued by many banks. Um, and institutions. American Express have a smaller number of banks, but still the cards are issued by the bank. The brands themselves, the American Express company or Visa company, they manage the brand. The brand. They are not the one giving you the loan. The issuing bank is the one who is giving you the loan. So that means your contract is with the bank, not the not Visa. Or American Express. So your contract is with the specific bank that issued the card. In order for you to use your credit card responsibly and smartly, you need to understand how to read the credit card statements. So most most banks nowadays will have uh, the statements online, so it's very easy to access it. Uh, in 2009, after the 2008 financial crisis, uh, Congress now have requires credit card company to print these warnings. Uh, they need to warn you about the total cost if you only make the minimum payment per month, how long you will take off the entire, the entire balance, once again, if you only pay the minimum payment, and how long it will take to pay off the loan if you pay higher than the minimum, and what is the total dollar amount when interest is factored in. And that's because a lot of consumers were not aware of the true cost of credit card uh, financial charges, and the law was changed to make sure that consumers are aware. Understanding how financial charges are uh, calculated is a very important part of personal finance. So let's take a look at how that is determined. So finance charge or interest charge, they are computed based on something called the average daily balance and the annual percentage rate. So the annual percentage rate is the APR. So first we're going to look at how do we compute this average daily balance. The average daily balance is basically a weighted average. So what we do is we take your balance times the number of days for that balance, and then you add it up and divide it by the total number of days. Uh, if you assume that there are 365 days per year and 30 days per month, the finance charge is computed as the uh, average daily balance times the APR. Remember, the APR is the interest rate or the interest rate per year. And that's why we divide it by 365, that's 365 days in a year, times 30, that is assuming that there are 30 days per month. Let's look at an example to demonstrate how the day average daily balance and finance charges are calculated. So first we're gonna assume that the billing period is 30 days, um, and the beginning balance is $1,000. And you pay $50 on day five, and you spend $80 on day 15, there's no other transactions and the APR is 20%. So let's take a look at what, your, what the balance looks like. So let's say at the beginning in day zero, your balance is $1,000. And then on day five, you pay off 
fifty dollars. So your balance will go down to nine fifty because one thousand minus fifty is nine fifty. And then on day fifteen, you're gonna spend eighty dollars. So nine fifty plus eighty will give you a balance of one thousand and thirty dollars. And then you don't make any other transaction for the remaining period. So nothing happened between uh, day 15 and day 30. So in other words, for the first five days, your balance is $1,000. And then the next 10 days, so between day five and day 15, your balance is $950. And then for the last 15 days, between day 15 and day 30, your balance is $1,030. So to reiterate, the balance for the first five days is $1,000. For the next 10 days is $950. And for the last 15 days is $1050. So the average daily balance is $1,000 times five, five is five days, and then 950 times 10, and then plus 1030 times 15. And then we divide that by 30 because there are 30 days. So our average daily balance turns out to be $998.33. Next, we're gonna compute the finance charges. So the APR is 20%, and our average daily balance is $998.33. So using the formula from the uh, previous slide, the finance charge is the average daily balance times the APR, so 20% is 0.2, divided by 365 days times 30 days. Again, that's the building period. So our finance charge is $16.41. So now you know how to compute both the average daily balance and finance charges. There are a couple of important notes to know about finance charges. They are added at the end of the month after the billing period. So what happens is if you pay off the entire billing uh, balance that they tell you, your beginning balance for the next month will still include the unpaid finance charges. So you must pay off the finance charges before the due day or else you'll get finance, you will get charged interest again uh, the next month. So knowing how to compute finance charges will allow you to avoid uh, these additional charges. So in the last example, the ending balance is going to show as $1,030 because that's your balance uh, on day 30. But in order to avoid finance charges for the following month, you have to pay the finance charge of 1641 as well so that you don't get charged again. Uh, so here is a real life example of what they what the bank called trailing interest. So this is the uh, this is the terminology that is used by American Express. So again, it's, it, it meant it. Basically, it says the same thing, uh, that if you didn't pay your last balance in full, then you will still be charged trailing interest. Of course, if you always pay your balance in full every month, you'll never have to worry about it. But if you do end up missing a payment, uh, if you have never missed a payment before and you are late just once, uh, you could, you, oftentimes you can call the credit card and they may be willing to negotiate to forgive, for, to forgive a one-time uh, missed payment. Finally, let's take a look at what you need to know to choose a, a good credit card. First, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, you'll hear uh, this uh, government agency referred to many times in this class because they are designed to protect consumers from uh, potential financial problems. They publish a list of credit card complaints. So a good strategy is to avoid any company that is on the list. The other is to understand yourself and know your own, own Know your own spending habit. Remember that fees and interest act up very quickly, uh, and whether or not the annual fee is worth the, re the reward, really look at the value of the rewards. Oftentimes, they are designed to incentivize you to spend more money. So is that really a worthwhile reward to have? Read all the fine prints, very important. 
and uh, if you are under the age of 21, uh, you have to provide proof of income to get your credit card unless you are co-signed by someone else older, older than 21. You now learn a lot about credit card and how to use it responsibly so that you can take advantage of the pros of credit card and avoid the downside of credit card usage. We'll end the video here. I'll see you back again here soon.